Hey everybody, this is Scooby-Doo, and this lesson will be uh, 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 comparing two population means. And I'm here at school, so you might hear an announcement or just some background noise, so we'll try and get through this the best we can. Okay, a uh, comparison of the mean responses in two populations is your most common goal of inferencing studying. So does increasing the amount of calcium in our diet reduce your blood pressure? So this example is on page 650 to 52. So examination of a large sample of people revealed that a relationship between calcium intake and blood pressure, uh, there is a relationship between that. And the relationship was strongest amongst the black men. Such observational studies uh, did not establish a causation. Researchers therefore designed a random comparative experiment. And what they did is they, they experimented with 21 healthy black men. And they randomly chosen, that's important right here, that they randomly chosen 10 of these men, which is basically half of the 21, to get the calcium supplement, and the other 11 received a placebo pill that looked identical. The experiment was double blind, and so you need to know what double blind means. It means nobody knew who got what pill, the people who were giving it to them and the people who were taking it. They didn't know. And the response var uh, variable is the degre decreased uh, systolic blood pressure for a subject after 12 weeks in millimeters of mercury. So an increase will appear as a negative response, okay? So, um, and there's what double blind is right there. So double blind is, um, I'll try and move this. Is it going to let me move it? It won't. Double blind is uh, neither the subject nor the people who are in contact with them knows who's getting what the treatment, okay? All right, so uh, so take group one to be the calcium group and group two to be, be the placebo group. So here's the two groups right here. So go ahead and enter those in list one right there and enter this in list two. Okay, so this uh, group one goes in list one, group two will go in list two. All right, in your calculator. Go ahead and do that. All right, and then from the data, you can calculate that. Now, we did this in class. If we did a one-variable statistic for this group right here, we'd find uh, that the mean is 5, and the standard sample standard deviation is 8.743. And if you did a one-variable stat for this one, you'd get this data right here. Okay, we'll come back to that in just a second. All right, so the calcium group shows a drop in blood pressure of 5 right there, okay? And these guys really didn't show much of a drop in blood pressure. It was a negative uh, 0.23, which actually is an increase, okay, with the placebo. But nothing, there's really virtually no change in blood pressure right there, all right, on those guys. Okay, so this exam fits a two-sample setting. Since we want to test the claim, uh, we'll perform a significance test. Our inference toolbox will provide this procedure. Okay, so here we go. So step one, identify the population. So we're going to um, uh, we're going to state the hypotheses in words and symbols. So uh, we'll write the hypotheses in terms of the mean decrease uh, we would uh, see in the entire population of the first uh, mu one for the men taking the calcium for 12 weeks, and the other one is for the placebo. So the hypotheses are, remember, your, your no hypotheses is there's no change. So they would be equal to each other. The mean decrease in blood pressure for those taking calcium would be the same for the, those taking the placebo. And so we want to know, is it greater than, because we want to know, um, uh, did the calcium ones actually decrease? And remember, decrease was a positive. So was it greater than uh, the placebo guys? That's what this says right here. Okay, remember this. This is our no hypotheses, because we're going to show you uh, later how to do it in the calculator. And we've got to remember that. Okay, step two, choose the appropriate inference procedure and verify the conditions for using this. We do not know, uh, yet know what procedure to use because haven't, I haven't taught you yet. So we're going to check the required conditions right here. So because of the randomization, we're, we're willing to regard the calcium and placebo groups of, of two independent SRSs because they randomized it. And all the samples are small. We can check for serious normalities by examining the data in a back-to-back -back stem plot. Okay, so here's a back-to-back -back stem plot of that data right here. Okay, and then you can do it like this, the stem plot like this, or the book did it like this. Notice I did the numbers 1, 1, 1, so this is uh, negative 1, this is negative 1, negative 1, negative 3, negative 3. Okay, this is, uh, this is 2, this is 3, this is 5. Your book did it like this, you guys. Uh, they did the numbers backwards. Just make sure you're consistent whichever way you do it, you guys. So they did it from the big numbers going to the small numbers out this way. Okay, uh, so here we go. Actually, they did it from smallest number to biggest because negative 3 is actually smaller than negative 1. Okay, that's what they did right there. And negative 4 is actually smaller than negative 3. So probably this, is, this looks more appropriate right here, you guys. That was my mistake on the other one. 
Okay, so uh, the placebo response uh, appears, this guy over here, doesn't that appear like a nice normal curve? The calcium group has an irregular shape, um, which is uh, not unusual when there's only a few observations. There's only 10 of them right here. And there's no outliers and there's no departures for normality that prevent us from using what we're going to do as a T procedure. All right, so let's go ahead and get some formulas here. So sampling distributions of my means, my differences of my means. You draw two RSR, SRSs with size N1 and N2, unknown uh, population means. Okay, so uh, my... Uh, uh, my sampling distribution is this right here, okay? So this is my confidence interval. So it's going to be the means minus this whole groovy looking formula right there. Don't worry. They'll give that to you on, the, on your test right there. Okay, where the upper 1 minus C over 2 critical values for your, uh, your, your T distribution with K being the smaller of the 2. So the K is your degrees of freedom, you guys. So the smaller of the 2 degrees of freedom. So one is 10 minus 1 or 9. The other one is 11 minus 1 or 10. We choose the 9 one, okay? We always choose the smaller degrees of freedom. All right, so to test the hypotheses, we're going to compute a two-sample statistics, okay? So here's the formula for your T-score formula, okay? And then we use the p-values or critical values uh, in, your, in your table C for the t-distribution. The true p-value or fixed significance level will always be less than the value calculated from your, your t-distribution, uh, your de degrees of freedom, no matter what the value of unknown population standard deviations you have. Okay, so uh, I'm going to skip that. It was kind of like blah, blah, blah right there. So here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, crank this out. We're going to go in, ahead and do... Um, uh, uh, compare the test statistics for the p-values. Okay, there's my formula for my t-score. So there's all the numbers that we plugged in. We get 1.64. So we go down to my degrees of freedom of 9, because that was the lesser of 2 on, on table C, and look at 1.64, you guys. And then you get this guy right here. So when you go, this is my degrees of freedom of 9, and I'm looking for 1.64. Well, 1.64 is in between these two numbers here. So my probability is going to be between... 10% and 5% right there, okay? So we're going to do this in the calculator. So plug all those in list 1 and those in list 2, and hopefully you already did that right there. And this is how you do it on your calculator. So when you plug all that in your calculator, you end up getting your T-score. There's my 1.604, and your probability, look, that's between 10 and 5% right there, okay? So your probability is about 6.4%, all right? So there is a, and, and go ahead and draw that, you guys. This will show your AP readers you know what you're talking about right there. And your p-value uh, is at uh, uh, 0.0644 right there. Okay. And then step four, interpret your results. The experiment was found evidence that claim did reduce blood pressure. The calcium did reduce blood pressure. But the evidence falls a bit short for the traditional 5% and 1% levels. So we're going to fail to reject HO at either, either of these significant levels. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate a 90% confidence interval for the mean of these calcium things. Okay, we have their confidence interval formula, but here's how we do it in the calculator, you guys. All right, so go ahead and you're going to uh, plug that in, and when you plug all of that information in, uh, you get that confidence interval right there. So I am 90% confident, I'm sorry, 90% of my intervals are going to contain my population mu right there, okay? All right, uh, and... Um, uh, let me go back. You'll see that in a second. So since 90% uh, of the confidence interval includes uh, uh, zero right there in this, we cannot re um, uh, reject the null hypotheses against the two-sided alternative hypotheses at the 10% significance level because 90% does include that right there. If it wasn't inside of there, then we can say uh, that it, it would be significant enough. But since it is in my 90% confidence interval, uh, I can't reject that guy. And there's your homework.